Good evening and welcome to Hollister School District uh, Parent Workshop on engaging kids with uh, learning and academic support for students with uh, special needs. Uh, this workshop will, will, is geared towards uh, students with uh, mild to moderate disabilities. And uh, so this will be uh, what we'll be talking about. So before we begin, we're gonna, I wanna introduce our presenter. So our presenter is Mahalia Magavo. She is our teacher on special assignments and she focuses on And she is focusing on, I'm sorry, um, specializing in reading instruction and, and uh, structured literacy. And also we have uh, Mike Cruz. She is a special education coordinator and she is also a former special education teacher. So these will be your presenters for today. A couple of uh, housekeeping. Uh, we have a new feature for today's webinar. Uh, as you know, you can call in, uh, you can ask questions through our chat and we'll have a special time during our presentation to uh, where you can uh, ask questions, but we also have a new feature where you can call in with any questions, and we'll be displaying the phone number when you, um, when you during your screen during the time that uh, we'll be taking questions. Okay, so at this point, we're gonna um, we're gonna have Mahalia to start us off. Okay, so I'm Mrs. Magabo. Um, besides being a teacher, I am also a parent. I have three children. My oldest is an incoming high school student at Gekka. And I have two boys, one is eight and one is six years old. Um, just like you and a lot of other teachers, I am trying to balance homeschooling and working from home. Um, this workshop is intended uh, to support you parents in assisting your child's learning, um, specifically in my area, which is reading, and my will be um, talking about math. Um, so before I proceed with five proven ways for you to support your child's reading, I want to impart with you an important consideration that everyone's situation is different. Each family should consider what is best for them. And some students are ready for educational activities, but some might need a little bit more time to process what's going on before they can fully dive into these educational activities. So the first um, way to support your child's reading is to flood their day with read alouds. Okay, so reading gives us some place to go when we have to stay where we are. So reading aloud will not only support your child's um, academic development, but it also strengthens your bond with your child. Research says that if kindergartners start reading for 20 minutes per night, by the end of sixth grade, that student will have read an equivalent of 60 school days. Okay, compared to a student who reads five minutes per day, that student will have read for 12 school days, and student C will have read for three school days. So how about our struggling readers? They are at the disadvantage position because they lose out on vocabulary when they are not able to access these books. That's why we want them to be exposed to read alouds. There are three types of read alouds. One is when a parent reads aloud to a child, when a child watches a read aloud, and that's accessible online. There are, um, there's a website called Story Online um, where celebrities read classic storybooks and there's also an option for children to listen and read along to a read aloud, like Audible or Kindle. Now, before we proceed with um, read alouds, we need to make sure we structure that time. One is to, to structure a specific time to read daily. Second is to choose the text that, is, that matches your child's interests. Third is to make sure you're reading aloud and thinking aloud with your child to process the information. Fourth is to support accurate word reading. And lastly, the most important thing is to emphasize meaning, which means to help the child visualize, predict, and summarize the text. These are other resources online that you can um, look at. 
The second tip is for you to coach your child's read aloud. So our goal is for our children to become automatic in word recognition and fluency, which means they can focus more on decoding. They can focus more on the text, on the meaning and the message of the text when they are not fussing with the words. So um, unfortunately, I will not be able to play this video, but you can view it at your own time. Just make sure that you keep um, note of some strategies. Like when, you're, when your child is reading to you, make sure you track it or your child tracks it with a pencil or his finger. Make sure you point out to the vowels when a child misreads the word, tapping it, tapping the words when a child misreads the word, breaking down a longer word by using a visual paper, and check for understanding. And don't hesitate to give out a hard word if it's too difficult for the child to read. So when your child has difficulty blending sounds to read words, um, all you need, a simple tip is all you need is a whiteboard and a whiteboard marker. Let's watch this video to give you some strategies how you can integrate reading and spelling. So that's one strategy for our beginning struggling readers. Another strategy for students who are struggling with multisyllabic words is to use post-its. First and foremost, um, they need to know what vowels are. And here's a video to show you how you can teach your child um, to break down a, a multi-syllabic word. So we're going to start with this word. And again, if you know it, don't say it. You're going to ask yourself, how many vowels do you see in this word? Well, I see two vowels. Are they together or apart? Well, they're apart. Since they're apart, I know I need two post-it notes. The first step that I'm going to do in this is I'm going to take my vowels and I'm going to put them on my post-it notes. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my consonants down, making two closed syllables. So I bring my consonants down, and I read the first part of that word, rust. I read the second part of that word, tick. I put it together. I have rustic. Okay, here's one that has a, a few more vowels in it. Okay, so, for, so our goal with these strategies is to increase word awareness. So make sure you ask your, your, um, your student or your child, how many vowels do you see? Are they together or apart? And how many syllables will be there? Will there be? How many post-its will you need? So if you are interested in understanding the science of reading and the structure of teaching reading, I have embedded in this PowerPoint a crash course in reading. Another strategy is to play sound games with your child. So there are two um, easy um, um, activities that can help your child become a better reader and to improve a child's um, phonemic awareness, which is one of the strongest predictors of being a successful reader. So one is what we call segmenting 
when, for instance, you say a word while you're driving and you want to play a game with your, with your child, I'm going to say the sounds. I'm going to say a word and I want you to break down the sounds in this word. For instance, my word is mat. What are the sounds? M, a, t. Blending is just the reverse of that. For instance, um, I'm going to say the parts of a word and I want you to put them together. For instance, st, a, m, p. What's the word? Stomp. So those simple activities can help your child learn how to listen to sounds. But research says that if you combine it with multi-sensory activities like using beads or blocks and even letters, it makes it a stronger and more effective activity. So let me show you an activity called Build It. And you, um, let me just emphasize that a student doesn't have to know all his letter sounds in order for a child to do this. Just a few basic sounds, and I want you to um, um, internalize this, that um, the learning of alphabetic principle or alphabet should be integrated with reading. Let me show you a short activity. Your friend build a word today? Okay, let's build the word. So another activity that is a little bit more complex is called switch it. It integrates, it's a high utility activity because it combines and integrates um, activities like letter sound awareness, phonemic awareness, vocabulary, and decoding. Let me show you. Um, So the goal of these activities is to make it multi-sensory. That means the child is listening to the sounds, manipulating letter cards, looking at the teacher's mouth, and saying the sounds as well. The fourth tip is to encourage all kinds of writing. We have to connect writing to meaningful activities, day-to-day -day activities, just like a two to three sentence summary of a book, a letter to a family member, or someone in a nursing home or in a hospital, what the family dinner menu will be, a gross grocery items, news story from the day's news, and a to-do list. But I want to emphasize that, especially for our young learners, handwriting and spelling play an important role, reminding them how to hold the pencil, how to sit right, will improve their, their handwriting because fluent and legible handwriting goes hand in hand with the ability to write strong compositions. Now for our older kids, um, this is for our younger kids, we have to teach them how to write the letters in certain order. 
So I'm sure you have received this kind of paper where there's a sky line, a plain line, grass line, and worm line. So their letters are grouped according to, their, to the way we form them. For our older students, there are different ways we can use technology to improve their writing. One is by using Google Docs and activating voice typing. You can also activate spelling and grammar check. Although the spelling grammar check is not as robust as this particular um, Google Chrome extension, it's called Read and Write. It also has word prediction and you can use a built-in dictionary. The last tip I wanna give you and the most important is for you to remember to build your, your child's knowledge about the world. Because being a successful reader means being an automatic and a strong reader, but also a, a student with strong language comprehension. And you can only build that if we learn by doing. That means everything that you're doing at home can be a learning activity, such as cooking, baking, checking the weather forecasts, card games, and board games, doing puzzles, painting, nature walks, and even chores. While you're doing all of these activities, you can build their vocabulary, build their background knowledge. Always remember, your environment should be a rich oral language environment. And don't forget, there are lots of podcasts and websites that are available and you can check them out. My kids love them. Um, and before I end this, I want to end this on a positive note. I want to encourage you that at the end of the day, um, you, have, you as parents, we as parents, have the opportunities to individualize our child's learning, to explore their interests and nurture their curiosity and support them in the best way we can. So at this, at this moment, we're going to open up the question, but before we, we begin, start with the questions, I want to just let you know that you this uh, the link to this presentation is going to be in the description. Yes. So if you ever want to go back and look at some of the slides and some, some of the videos that were not played, uh, you have the, the opportunity to do that. So as I mentioned earlier, uh, we have a new feature this, for this webinar. This time, uh, you can type in your questions right now on the chat or you can call uh, the number that's on the screen and we will be taking your questions live. So there's a little bit of delay um, when it comes to some of the chat, so we'll just wait for a few more seconds. questions? Yeah, Remember too, you can um, you can call the phone number on the screen if you want to or even or you can email us too. Um, we'll be giving out our, our emails uh, towards the end also. Our email is actually on the I think the second page of this slide so um, Mrs. Pagabo's email, my email, and then Mr. Romero's email is on that slide. Um, the link to this presentation is in the description. Okay. So we're going to okay. continue on. And now uh, Mrs. Mike Cruz will be presenting. Great. So for, um, for my part, I'm going to provide, um, I'm going to discuss strategies to support your child in math. Like um, Mrs. Magabo, I am also a parent of two children, an eighth grade student and a second grader. So as a parent, I feel your challenges as well, you know, homeschooling the kids at this time. So the first one that I would like to discuss is manipulatives. So manipulatives are tools that your child can see and physically touch. 
So here are some examples like coins is a type of a manipulative and as well as blocks and then puzzles and markers. And did you know that there are math manipulatives that you already own that you can use with your child at home? Coins are great manipulatives, especially if your child is currently learning about money and math. Toys. Oh, you probably have a lot of those. You can use all sorts of toys such as blocks, cars, dolls for counting or identifying patterns. And this is actually probably one of your kids' favorite. Not so much with um, us parents. Lego bricks are toys, but we're going to put them in a separate category because they are useful manipulatives for both our young and older students. And you can do so many things with it in relation to math. Another one that you can use um, are markers, crayons, and pencils. Although they are usually our school supplies, you can definitely use them as math manipulatives for counting, sorting by color, shape, and size. Another one is gonna have this food. You can use Cheerios, Fruit Loops, or even gummy fruits for counting, sorting, or identifying patterns. M&Ms and Skittles will work too. And the good thing about this is that they eat as they finish the activity. And of course, our TP rolls. You can decorate or label toilet paper rolls for number recognition, ordering, or sorting numbers. So don't forget to keep those. Now, what, what about our um, upper grade students? So when I say upper grades, these are students in fourth through eighth grade. You can use post-it papers at home as manipulatives. You can help your child organize post-it papers to solve a multiplication or division problem just like the one we have on the slides. Your child can also use a blank piece of paper or even construction paper to create foldables to be used as a manipulative or even just a visual support. Down here is a link to Dynazyke's Teaching Math with Foldable Resource. So you can definitely um, uh, go to that website for more details. The next one is using visual representation. So math visual representation in simple terms refers to number lines, graphs, drawing, pictures, or diagrams as what you can see on this slide right now. So let's use the food manipulative example. Um, I just like M&Ms, and so we'll use that. So to create different types of visual representation. So for example, in here, your child can sort 10 green M&Ms and five red ones. You can then help him to graph this to show another way of applying math concept through a bar graph, a column graph, or even a pie chart. This example shows us that you can take available materials at home and use it to teach math. Other practical tips that you can use at home using visual representation, and this is again um, using real world examples, is using your uh, food packages. So use nutrition labels in food packages. You and your child can add the total amount of fat, calories, carbohydrates, or protein. You can help your child use a number line to add or subtract two numbers. Let's use the number line on the slide as an example. If the nutrition label has five grams of sugar and seven grams of total carbohydrate, then you can use the number line to add five plus seven, which is 12. And then another practical tip using real world example is of course, checking the weather every day. Help your child graph it. The, the picture on the left side is really geared towards younger children. So you can help your child tally graph weather for this week. And then the picture on the right is geared towards older students. So the other picture shows a student creating a bar graph on the temperature of world cities. So this is again an activity for older students. The third one is building fluency by mastering basic facts. Math facts are important because they, are, they form the building blocks for higher level math concepts. There are different ways you can help your child, base, uh, your child master basic facts. 
You can do this by practicing skip counting, using flashcards, using games, singing songs, or even chants. The older students really like the math um, rap songs. And then you can also relate to real life situations as well. There are math songs in YouTube. That should be your go-to websites. And then if you want to go old school, you can create your own flashcards. Or on the other hand, if you like integrating technology and you have a smartphone, then there are also a lot of free math facts app that you can download and use with your child. I just actually downloaded one last week. All right, and then practical tips for mastering basic facts is that it's important to consistently and regularly practice math facts. Dedicate at least five to 10 minutes per day. And then you can vary the activity um, on a daily basis. For example, Monday, you probably will use flashcards and then Tuesday, you can use an online game. And students learn best when you make the lesson fun. So make this activity fun. Make it look like you're playing a game. And as a parent, remember that as long as your child can figure out an answer quickly in her head, that is in about three seconds or less, he or she has mastered the fact and can use it in meaningful ways as part of his or her daily life. The next one is using math vocabulary. You probably will ask, why do I need to teach or use math vocabulary with my child? Learning and understanding vocabulary is a very important part of your child's language development and math proficiency. Some basic uh, math vocabulary that you can help your child with are word problem keywords. For example, here on the slides, you can see keywords in addition, such as add, more, plus, or all together. And then uh, when a word problem includes keywords such as product or groups of, multiple of, then it pertains to multiplication. And then there's a lot of printable ones too when you um, search um, in Google and then print it, or if you don't have access to a printer, what I usually would do is I'll grab a piece of blank paper and write the keywords on it and then show it to my child by using it as a visual support. And so how can you support your child at home to improve their math vocabulary? It's important to talk and write about math and connect it to things they see and do in everyday life. Approach it together and when possible, provide your child with a visual support to help him or her understand things better. For example, at home, you can talk about two or three dimensional shapes. Ask your child, what is the shape of the paper towel roll? You can say, or he or she can say, it's a cylinder. Yes, that's right. You can ask your child to repeat the word and explain that a cylinder is an example of a three-dimensional shape. By doing this, you're already talking and writing and integrating math in your child's daily life. Here's an example, just a practical tip um, uh, on how math vocabulary can help your child solve problems easily. So this word problem says, John rode his bike seven miles to the library. He took a shortcut on the way home, which was only five miles long. How many miles did John ride all together? So in here, you can ask your child what the given numbers are. That would be seven and five. Then you can ask your child to reread the question, how many miles did John ride all together? and ask your child what is the keyword that can help him or her find the answer. In here, we circle the word all together. On the right side, you can see our keywords addition visual support, and I see that all together is listed there. So that means all together is a vocabulary keyword for addition. So then we're going to add seven and five. The last one is utilizing online resources. Technology can help us parents and students learn and understand math. With proper guidance, your child can use technology tools to solve challenging math problems, build computational skills, and solve real life math problems. 
On this page, you can see that um, we created a web page as a one-stop shop of all instructional websites and online resources for special education families. All you need to do is go to www.hesd.org slash special education and go to parent resources. And then um, when you're on the parent resources page, all you need to do is click on instructional websites and then you'll be able to see all the online resources and instructional websites that we have for you. We continually update our website, so always um, check it uh, regularly. All right, I also want to highlight two popular math websites. The first one is Khan Academy. Your child may already have an account with, um, you know, with his class, so make sure to check with the teacher first. If your child does not have an account, then you can sign up for your child. What teachers like about Khan Academy is that students can practice at their own pace. Students can watch a short video about a topic and then practice the skills before taking a quiz. So what we did here is on the left side, you can see a, a curriculum, a second grade curriculum for math. And you can see on the far end that it says that your student, if your student is a second grader, can actually earn 5,100 mastery points in this course. On the other side, you can see a screenshot of a curriculum for an eighth grade student. And an eighth grade student, um, will most likely earn 12,100 mastery points in this course. Another um, great um, online resource for math is the Great Kids Milestone Math videos. The website has different types of videos per grade level. What we love about this website is that you can watch videos that are short. They're typically two to three minutes long. Um, the first one on the left, you can see that this is a video of a first grade student understanding the tens and ones place. On the right side, you can see a sixth grade student working with ratios. So again, um, I'm not going to play the video right now, but feel free to watch it during your free time. But those are really great um, resources for you or your child to watch. So at this point, we are going to be accepting any questions. Again, feel free to type your questions on the chat room, or you can also call our phone number 831-630-6320. Uh, Is that right? Yes. We actually have a comment from Ms. Kim Taylor. Um, she said that I love that you're doing this and I have been posting this on Facebook. Thank you so much. Um, this is their way of really helping our parents right now because as Ms. Magabo a while ago mentioned, we're not just educators, we're also parents. So we're here and ready to help you know, our parents the best way we can. Another thing too that I would like to stress out is that if, for example, you are having a difficult time teaching your child with a specific lesson or activity, feel free to reach out to the teachers. Use that individual check-in or email the teachers um, because they are there to help you as well. I don't see any more comments, but again, you're welcome to call in. Um, can answer, you can answer any questions you may have at 831-630-6320. Uh, so we have one question about a recording of this um, video. So you parents, if you are unable to watch it live today, um, we are going to post it on our um, website and then also on the YouTube HSD social media. So feel free to watch it. And then the link for the presentation is also there if you want to watch the other embedded videos.
And as we wait for questions, we just want to let you know that we will be having the same presentation in Spanish, and this will happen on uh, next Tuesday uh, from 4 to 5. And another good thing, um, Daniel, I know that next week you're also going to have a different webinar on social and emotional learning, correct? Yes, so we're going to be having that. Um, let me get the. Let me go over the flyer so we, I have the exact dates and times for you guys. We actually have a flyer that we sent out uh, a couple of last week, actually, through one of our um, all calls. And I can give you the, the times right now. So our social emotional would be from um, May 7th and the English version from 4 to 5 and, and uh, May 12th for the Spanish version. And then we also have uh, COVID-19 uh, helping kids with autism, uh, cope with autism. And that will be on May 14th and May 19th for the Spanish. And then we have another series of the uh, social emotional, and that's going to be uh, towards uh, the end of the month. And we'll, we'll give you more updates on that. But we've been getting a lot of good, um, a lot of good feedback from our kind of workshop. So thank you again for all of you that have joined us. Um, again, you can, um, if you have any questions, you can feel free to email us anytime. And you can also uh, watch these uh, same parent workshops again. They're all located in our Hollister School District uh, YouTube channel on our website. So um, thank you again for your support. And again, um, we're here to help you and help your students be successful. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.